right, you know why you're here. You know why I'm here. <laughs> All right, this is the 2025 January, 2025 people. And I think, first of all, you know, as usual, we have to check the um quality. All right, paper looks straight, seems to be straight. Yeah, good lines on the other, on either side. No finger, no fingerprints, no finger marks. Yeah, man. Looks like we have a big copy here. Where did it come from? The world may never know. All right, let's go. Number uno. Section one. I remember this paper is always broken down into four questions, four major questions. That's the new syllabus from 2020. From 2020 up, we'll have the new format. Any paper before 2020 will have the old format. But you all should just do the new papers because we have enough by now. That's like 2021 up. That's enough um, papers. But if you want to really, you know, solidify your one and be sure, 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 you know what you know, what you know, what you know. You could go and do some of the old papers from like 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Um, of course, I have videos for all those. Let's go. The manager at an art gallery purchased a notebook computer and was provided with details for free access to cloud storage. Great. Lies, they tell us. Free. What even is free? All right. Explain one benefit or one limitation of using cloud storage. All right. So... Always a scenario, remember when they ask you questions, they're not going to just ask you a lot of definition questions. They might get a few definitions sprinkled here and there, but for the most part is a lot of explanations and things to test your understanding, which of course I believe is better because you actually want to test what children understand, not just what they could spit back on a paper, aka regurgitate, right? So one benefit is um, ease of access, right? You don't have to have the exact same words I have, but you probably want to make sure you have the same thought um cloud storage and you all know by now if you've been watching my past paper videos that my handwriting progressively gets worse and worse this is the best you're going to get here by the time you reach the end of the paper it might be unintelligible but at least focus on what they're saying right yeah cloud storage um can 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 is good can be accessed wherever there is an internet connection all right, and then one limitation would be limited access, which is almost the opposite. When there is no internet, the files are not accessible. All right, you also could put in multiple devices for good. That's a good thing. Another one for bad is um, hackers can't steal data. Um, there may be some other good ones, there may be some other bad ones, but these are usually more straightforward answers. If they, if they have an answer sheet, more than likely these will be on the answer sheet, so you could do that. Alright, next is the gallery needs to improve its operations and has decided to deploy devices at specific locations in the gallery. Name devices that will be appropriate for carrying out each of the following um, described below. So they're testing your knowledge of the types of devices now, so they probably want you to go through uh, the tablets and PCs and whatnot. So allow employees to register the attendance or the use of their fingerprint. Um, you would probably want to say fingerprint scanner, but you probably want to say biometric scanner. Fingerprint scanner. Because if you use back your fingerprint, you may just be accused of just using back what they said in your question. So biometric is definitely the term that they want you to look for. So use that. Um, to all be announced, exhibit reason to us, I'll be a speaker. Because, duh. The scanner code to access the details of the product using um, state-of-the-art pieces. That will be a barcode reader. Um, no. If you provide a barcode reader, you might get it, but I'm almost positive that what they are looking for is a, um, a OMR. Yeah. OMR. Put optical mark reader. And then if you put barcode. Because what happens is... They're looking for technical terms, and if they're looking for the technical term, a barcode reader is technically an optical mark reader. So you need to know the difference between OMR, OCR, optical mark reader, and optical character scanner, optical character reader, and MICR, magnetic ink character recognition. So those are things that they're looking for here, and I'm almost positive that that's what, they, that's what they're looking for. All right, to allow the customer to care to input information, usually input inputting information is just a keyboard. They didn't tell anything about scanning or anything of that sort. So, yeah, if they put in information. So you could input information with a keyboard. You could also information, put input information with a touchscreen. 
and yeah generally that's it um you could info put input information by speaking so you could put voice recognition but of course voice recognition is not the strongest answer technically they should accept it but i can't i can't tell you that they would all right that's part b part c the gallery needs a database to store so what you will notice with these questions is these questions will just give you like one topic in, the, in question one i think they could ask you theory and they could ask you some productivity tool at the same time so they will mix the questions in and turn it into like a full-scale application of it in a, in, a, in a like scenario or something which is good for them because it makes you have to think and thinking is good so now the difference between data and information so data dash is raw facts and figures information is data that has been applied to a particular yeah i just yapped a bit there because data information is data with context but they give us four marks they give us four lines and so i took a chance to yap if you're if you're a yapper yeah yapper use out all the lines but if you're not a yapper you could actually just put it in point form and you're still getting marks nobody will get back to you all right complete the following table by inserting the data type that relates to each of the field all right reach the databases now so customer name more than likely that's going to be text because we're thinking about database data types now date of visit will be date slash time these are the things that you normally do when you're doing your database um ticket cost will be money so that's currency and address will be text they may ex they may accept long text sometimes you might see memo depending on the version of microsoft access that you're using you would see those sort of things but text is usually acceptable there long text memo no i think really a problem there Put the name of an appropriate field that can be used as a primary key for the database table and give one reason so a primary key in this context they want to look at these things that we have here which one will be a primary key now a primary key is a field in a database that cannot be duplicated usually it's like you know your id id is usually the first thing that you put as your primary key data but it's not really a primary key because data but is generally somebody could be born on the same day as you so out of all of these things there which one of them is the most unique out of all of the fields meaning it'll be hard to duplicate it it's very easy to duplicate the data visit because multiple do people could visit on the same day it's easy to duplicate the ticket cost it's easy to duplicate the address well no the address will be hard to duplicate unless you live in the same house customer name all right so there's a toss up between customer name and address which one is easier to duplicate is it easier to duplicate your name or is it easier to duplicate your address most times people will have one address however if two people live in the same place then you might want to say that address could be duplicated but it's also possible somebody can have your same name like hmm. right the good thing is that they um basically give one reason for your selection so i'll give you i'll give you both of them i will choose name because you of all the names feel name would be the least likely of why to duplicate especially if they use this name plus surname right so this is one possible answer the second possible i'll put this as one as like the strongest answer the second strongest answer will be address because no two people should have the same address that makes comma it unique now which one would i choose if i were writing it i would choose one of course because name um you could write in examples like john m wrong is he different from john p wrong so this is unique so if you play examples and you show that okay this is unique then yeah definitely address would be unique but two people can live by the same address so whole point of our primary key is what is the most unique thing that you could figure out the most unique thing that you could find out of course if you had customer id life would be a lot easier if you had phone number it would be a lot easier because those are better primary keys but that's that that's basically about it yeah all right 
But if you're struggling to understand primary keys and you like you're not you're not too sure what primary key is, secondary key and foreign key and all that stuff is, then you might want to check out your crash course. Um crash courses and classes that we have. So to get access to those things, 1868 308 8799. Right? WhatsApp that number. And that will give you access to our crash course, which will give you all of the theory, all of the syllabus, every single thing that you need to be able to know how to answer these questions. Especially if you're seeing words here that you've never seen before. Um, I promise you the crash course will have all that information and it will clearly explain to you what it is. Because I'll try my best to explain any past we found. So some of y'all don't understand, but some of y'all asking yourself, wait, I never heard of this thing in my life. Then you yeah, wanna WhatsApp that number. All right, so it's right there. What's up it? 1-866-308-8799. And we keep moving. All right, to provide data for one record in the database table, include the proposed primary key. Okay, so what they're trying to do here is they're trying to see if you actually understand what you just did with this primary key thing, right? So I have to give a person's name, their data visit, their ticket course, and their address. So I'm going to put name John B. Brown. Right, to show that it is, is, is their first name, middle initial, and surname. Date of visit, I'll put like um, the third or uh, 30th of the 4th, 2025. And then um, if you're watching this on the 30th of the 4th, 2025, leave a comment. That'll be kind of cool. Actually, that'll be kind of weird. Yeah. Ticket course is 200. And then address. I really gonna write out all this way. All right. Number two, Stone Drive. I am um, in a pineapple under the sea. Yeah. I'll change it from Stone Drive. I think that's Crab Drive. Yeah, probably. That's probably the one to publish. Um. Right. So your demonstration of this shows that you understand the data, but they active for the proposed primary key. So you want to make sure that they clearly state this is the primary key. Because they said, make sure you stay the proposed primary key. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you're watching this on the 30th of the 4th, 2025, that's kind of awesome. But maybe it is. Okay. The two objects that can be used to manipulate the data in the tables of a database. Two objects that can be used to manipulate the data in the tables of a database. What are you asking here? I. He. Two objects that could be used to manipulate the data. What do they mean by objects? Database objects. I think I know what they mean, but I'm not too sure if students know what they mean. Like the word objects is kind of weird. This language they already use. Um like there are four main database objects, right? Um there'll be like tables, um, forms, queries and reports, right? But they like manipulate the data. I wouldn't say that a, I mean, they do manipulate data in the thing, but a table is also an object. So they have in the tables of the database. So I guess you can't say tables. Tables is also the question. So we are basically, what they're asking is, what are the things that you can do to the data in a database? And you're essentially telling them, yeah, you're essentially telling them, um, a form, a query, or report yeah if you want to, if you want to like salt bait and sprinkle a little salt and thing on it um you probably want to say something like a form to enter data a query to find data and a report to display the data display the thing user or user friendly but it's only two marks so if you go if you do too much with the two marks i mean but they give you four lines for two marks and we all know how this goes. If they give you those four lines, you get anxiety because you say to yourself, I don't know how much to write and I'm not too sure if I want if they need them to write all that. So yeah, you could go ahead and this is a, a yappable question. You could yap for this. Alright, so let's go back through this module. No, no, no major things here. Question one, cake, question two. I mean one A, cake, one B. No real problem there, except for the using the keywords. Part C, no database stuff. Yeah, all of this is database theory. 
And if you really suck at database theory, you'll probably have some problems here because you don't understand some of the terminologies that they use. So yeah, people who weaken in databases or never did a database in their life, they may have issues with this, but other than that, I don't see much, I don't see any issue. So, all right, that's it for module, I mean, not module one, now this is, um, that's it for section one, remember? One, eight, six, eight, three, zero, eight, eight, seven, nine, nine. WhatsApp that number for the crash course if you want it. If you don't want your crash course, that's okay. On to the next one.